what's up? So, um, I want to talk a little bit right now about using Tourette's as a way to, um, as like a barometer for how, how we're doing in life. Um, I think anyone with Tourette's will, will know, actually I don't know this, but I'm, I'm guessing, correct me if I'm wrong, um, different points of your, of your life, you will be de- dealing with different types of, um, you'll have a different experience and you know, you'll be eating differently, your health will be different, your, your stress levels will be different, your sleep patterns will be, will be different, your study habits, etc. And your Tourette's will be different. And so um, I think it's really interesting to try to acknowledge how your Tourette's is tracking your lifestyle choices. Um, I remember when I was in second or third grade, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and they had me try to log how many ticks I had in the day. And I think it was to see if I was aware that I was actually ticking. And I think I would say like anywhere between five and 10 ticks a day, which seems crazy because I probably ticked five or 10 times in the waiting room of the, the hospital that we were going to. But um, that just kind of showed my awareness for the ticks, um, which is really interesting. Obviously at different points of our lives, we'll have different capacities for understanding and being aware of these things but I think overall we generally have a sense of you know how bad is it or how prevalent is it or how strong are these ticks or you know how yeah what's what, what's the amplitude or the frequency of these ticks in my day um, and so I think it can be really challenging to remember to do this thing because Life's hard enough as it is, let alone trying to count your ticks, you know, throughout the day. I mean, I don't know. If you're anything like me, that's going to be challenging. So, I would say on a micro level, it's difficult to do. Eh, I take that back. On a micro level, it's easy to do. I can tell you right now, like, how I'm doing or how I'm feeling. Um, So, that's easy. On a, maybe on a, like, a mid-level it's more difficult. It's like, how have I been this week? Um, you know, that's that's harder to remember. And then on a macro level, I think it's easier. It's like, how have I been this year versus when I was in fifth grade or seventh grade? Um, and that can that can be easier to to understand, especially if you take notes or you, you journal, which I highly recommend doing. Um, I'm going through a divorce right now, and like reading my journal has been very enlightening because it's opened up my eyes to problems that I used to have and I didn't realize how important they were and you kind of see this snowball effect of all of these different situations in our lives which kind of reinforces the idea that all experiences matter all of your 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 thoughts really matter the things that you tell yourself um, your your desires, your wants, your needs, all of those things really matter. You can't just uh, repress them or suppress them forever. Eventually, they will come out. So, um, yeah, forgot where I was going with that. Oh yeah, so one idea I have um, that has worked for me has been to um, sign up for an event. So. It could be anything, really. Um, I used to be big into marathons. Uh, I've run maybe, I don't know, somewhere between like five and ten marathons. And the, the, the process of running a marathon takes a lot of training. And you end up eating certain foods that are conducive to running. So, kind of your, your diet and your lifestyle and your sleeping pattern, I mean, all this is kind of... Um, wrapped up into this training program that's anywhere between four and eight months long. Um, And so for me, that allowed me to have this chunk of time where I didn't really need to focus on like eating the right foods necessarily too much because the training does that for you. You kind of like, you need carbs, you need to drink a lot of water, you need 
to do certain things just to keep your body functioning. And those certain things um, allow you to test how your body reacts to them, um, you know, for a little bit of time. Because usually, you know, having changing your meal or for one day or one week isn't necessarily enough. But, you know, for a marathon, like eight, six months, what is it, 12 to 20 weeks, something like that, um, is enough time to allow you to notice these changes. Uh, so that's one thing I really recommend. That's kind of how I figured out that, you know, my Tourette's flares when I eat too many process, processed sugars or when I'm not sleeping well or when I'm stressed out as I currently am. So yeah, those are some ideas. Um, so it doesn't need to be a marathon. It could be a half marathon. It could be a paddle race. And I think the important thing isn't like the intensity or the length, but it's that it's it's going to be something that you'll have to train for for over a month. So um, something that you'll be conscious about, something that you're working towards. It's a goal. It's not related to Tourette's. It's just something that is a part of your life. And you know, the side effects that are positive for this is that you're trying something new. You're going to meet new people. You're going to go outside your comfort zone. You'll probably get in better shape, you know, you'll start feeling better about yourself. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of positive, uh, positive reasons to do it. And on top of that, you'll get to notice how your dress changes and become more aware of, you know, your experience, which, which can't hurt. I mean, shit. We all need, uh, we could all use a little more awareness, I think. So yeah, that's the idea. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if you've um, tried anything that's worked for you. Um, how do you become more aware of your Tourette's and where your Tourette's is? Um, have you noticed anything else that has affected uh, your Tourette's in a positive or negative way. Do you have certain triggers? Are, is there, you know, these are all really cool things to share because the more we learn from each other, the more we can learn about ourselves and let's just try to spread the knowledge, spread the love. Um, this is kind of bringing me back to other activities that I used to do and I remember I used to be in swimming um, and call me crazy, but being in a Speedo when you're going through puberty is a stressful experience. And I would remember that when I was getting ready for these swim races, I would be ticking like crazy. Like I couldn't stand still. I'm just like feeling like I'm crawling out of my skin. And it was awful because I was just, the anxiety levels were peaked afraid of not performing well, I was afraid of people seeing how big my little penis was and my speedo, I was afraid of a lot of things, so that was very stressful, but then when I got in the pool, it's like all of my energy is focused on, you know, this task of swimming fast, and so the dreads just kind of evaporates, you know, you're just surviving, survival mode, um, which also reminds me of my experience in the marching band. So I was homeschooled, but um, I was in the marching band in high school. I was actually in the, the bands all the way through. So I went to school for public, I went to public school for, for band and choir um, and sports, swimming and lacrosse and ping pong. Um, but yeah, in marching band, think you're just out there having fun, you know, I was on the drum line, you think you're out there just having fun beating on the drums, but in reality, it's it's very difficult, it's very challenging, both physically and mentally, you practice long hours throughout the summer and school year, you memorize all these different steps and formations, so for each song that you have, you, you, you know a certain direction that you have to walk, speed you have to walk, you know, the number of steps, the size of steps, 
um, it's, it's crazy. And then on top of that, you're learning this very difficult um, musical, you know, I don't know what you call it, musical performance, and you're putting it all together. And when you perform, you're actually wearing like these ridiculous costumes with feathers, and they're really uncomfortable. But I noticed when I was performing, it's like the mind is so focused, so engaged that the Tourette's wouldn't really ever trigger. Um, so I'm curious, like, what have you experienced that um, has kind of made your Tourette's more of like a, a sub, it's kind of like a sub program. It's like you're running this main program, whatever it is, that's taking up all of the processing power. And there's a sub program of Tourette's that's kind of like sending signals, but the signals aren't enough to really, um, really penetrate the main focus of what you're doing. Uh, maybe it's video games, maybe it's a different sport, maybe it's, you know, reading or writing or drawing. Um, kind of curious, because that could be um, really interesting, you know. A lot of times if you're, if you're just sitting still and you're stressed and you're you're not really thinking about anything or focused on anything, you know, sometimes it can be just hard to focus in general on anything. Um, cause there's so many distractions and so many thought patterns happening that, uh, yeah, we can just be gone. Like the Tourette's can kind of be more of like a main program that's running alongside all these other thoughts and and, and issues that we're dealing with. So, yeah, I'm curious about that. Let me know. Um, hopefully, we can learn something together about that. Maybe just a thought. Um, yeah, that's probably good for now. See ya.